Hey folks, uh, thanks for taking a look at our today's webinar. This is a rebroadcast of the previous one we did uh, a couple days ago. Uh, we lost the uh, audio uh, for a portion of that, so we decided to re-record this. So, uh, what we're talking about today is Jewelry Cat Dream. So, Envision, Design, Create. Uh, it's a very, uh, very cool software. And I'm your presenter today, Dylan Malik. And uh, typically on the call would be uh, Diana Dietrich. Uh, but I'm redoing this for us. So uh, what we're going to look at today again is Jewelry Cat Dream. Uh, we're going to have a QA. and a and uh, we'll go ahead. Let's get started with it. All right. So what is Jewelry Cat Dream? All right. So first off, it, it's a CAD system. So I'm used to a CAD. I'm an engineer. I'm not a jewelry designer, so I'm not going to be showing you some fancy designs. It's you know, kind of the best I can do. Uh, but uh, I'm learning the software. I've been using it for a few months now, and uh, very fast and easy to pick up. Uh, and again. Uh, I'll be showing you two different styles. I'll be using some templates, and I'll be using some CAD uh, style tools to design a little little profile here. All right, so let's get into Jewelry CAD. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, we have a couple different styles of templates we can start with. Uh, we have these uh, basic templates where you can uh, define your open, solitaire, rings, clothes, electrical shapes, uh, bracelets, etc. Um, or you can actually just start with the uh, templates that we have up here. All right, so I'm going to do an open shank ring, uh, something very similar to the uh, ring right here that I kind of, I kind of, I kind of messed up the first time I went through. So I'm going to kind of redo it uh, correctly this time. Uh, and then add a little training on it from John Cavallo, who does Thursday night trainings, and uh, he uh, recently helped me with this ring. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up. A, a template to start with. So uh, we're going to do a tri triangle style shank on this ring. Uh, again, all our menu bars typically have this turn style type of selection tool. So let's go ahead and place that. All right. So if you notice we have a nice little uh, ring profile here. So uh, what we're going to do is put a little gem up here and a halo to fit around it. Uh, to accommodate that, we're going to make a little space in the top here. So under all our parts, uh, they have driving parameters. So these are parameters you can apply or parameters that uh, come with predefined uh, templates already. Uh, so I opened up the gap. So let's go ahead and place our stone. All right. So again, a little similar tile style, turn style for the uh, gems. I'm going to use the trillion style on this one. Uh, go ahead and place the dimensions as we place it. So very easy, useful interface to follow along with. And uh, what we have to attach to are these little coordinate systems in space. And what they're called, we call them as datums. Uh, the top two are here typically for the stone. So we can go ahead and attach that to that top datum for the stone. Let software create that profile. All right. Again, we need a halo to go around there. So uh, this one's going to be six millimeters, already predefined. Let's look at something here. So uh, I do know I need this bottom to go below it, and uh, each one of these little template files has a nice little turnstile with its own customizable template interface. Uh, so I need the depth and girdle to drop below that, so you could just kind of pop the numbers in there and preview it as you go along. I know I need to be at least above 6, so let me go ahead a little bit above 6.5, and I like to make this face a little more curved at the bottom here, so I'm going to adjust that. There we go. That looks good, so I'll go ahead and accept that. And of course, there's a gap in here, so we need to get this a little closer together so I can merge these two parts. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the driving parameters that you saw a while ago. Let's go 65. So it embeds itself, and it's not all the way to the inside, and it's not all the way encompassing the outside. So I'll show you a CAD tool here in a second that will take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and save my shape here. Let me uh, do something here with momentary close that. There we go. All right, so I just wanted to component it by itself. And there's a glitch with my video card that uh, it, it highlights the entire thing. Don't want that. So I want to just go ahead and merge this with that uh, body right there. There we have it. Now I can come over here and do what I was talking about a second ago using this CAD style uh, replace face. So I can come over here and tell this little extra sliver to replace itself 
to this inside face right here. And do the same thing for the other side. There you have it. And if you look at the front view, I do need to cut this away as well. So uh, I don't have the sketch to cut that. But again, inserting datums, inserting sketches anywhere along the geometry, along the face, along profiles, along an edge is very easy to do. So I'm just going to insert a sketch on my datum plane right here and use uh, the geometry of the part itself. So I'm going to say I want that inside edge. And what I'm going to do is just attach a circle to it. That way, if I change the ring size, I don't have to worry about resizing this cut shape. So that will be automatically adjusted with the profile. Uh, so there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to uh, cut symmetric and grab my uh, profile to cut. And there we have what I need to cut away. All right, that looks good. Let me go ahead and just get rid of that and blank that out. Don't need to see that anymore. There we have our profile shape and the ring's done. Uh, what I like to do now is go ahead and make this one solid unitized color so that's all gold now all right uh, so let's work with this top surface I want to be able to adjust the spread of my stones in here uh, so I'm going to do, use a little uh, wireframe tool in here and that's going to allow me to um, extend a curve along this edge here so uh, what I want to do is uh, drag a, drag my stones let's go ahead I may not need to let's just go with point two to that end right there. All right, there's the one curve, and we'll do another curve right there. Simple enough. So now let's go ahead and attach my curve, my gems between two curves on those. Uh, on those one, uh, actually go to pave. Excuse me, gem between two curves. So I'm going to filter to a curve, and there's that curve I created there. And there's a curve I created there, and let's put those on that face. All right, so let's do some adjusting here. I want at least six, and if I bump up the number, it's not increasing because of the size of the stone and the gap. Uh, so let me spread these out a little bit. So what allow me to do is just do an undersize. So I don't want a step value that high. Let's adjust my step value to 0.1 millimeter of a step. So I can just keep bumping these down. You know, 1.3 millimeter, that would work right there. So uh, let's go ahead and elevate these off the surface a little bit. And there we have our gems. All right, the next step is to actually get those uh, prongs on there to keep those attached. So I'll just use a prong tool. And I don't want to do it to each individual one. That would be time consuming. Let's go ahead and just do it to this entire feature. One step, let's look at the top of this. And these are hitting pretty well, location I want. Let's maybe adjust the position of these a little bit more so. Maybe make that 50. There we go. So this is more off the edge here. We've got some clearance down here. It looks good. And maybe bump the height down just for appearance sake right now. And again, a member mentioned each one of these dialog boxes. So if you want to go in there and adjust and tweak each one of these uh, styles, you can. Don't really need to. All right. So now that I got my prongs. Uh, let's make some room for these diamonds because right now they're embedded into the surface. So we would need a tool cutter for that. I'll just use a pilot cutter and again pick the stones. That way it automatically gives me the correct size. And uh, let's bump this down into the surface a little bit. And that looks good right there. All right. So let's, uh, again, instead of having to recreate these on these three faces, I'm going to do a, uh, do a pattern. So this, again, is a CAD type style tool that I'm kind of used to using. I want to do a component and go ahead and just window all these. I uh, inadvertently picked up the center profile, so I can just come over here and say, you know, I don't really want that in the selection, and uh, take that out. There we go. And uh, I want to do a circular pattern about a profile. Let's go ahead and use the coordinate system here. And, uh, of course, we need three, and tell it what type we want. Let's go ahead and go by spacing. So space these three along that axis. That looks good. There we go. All right, so the first thing to do, let's give those ring diamonds, excuse me, a place to nestle down into that surface. So let's go ahead and merge our cutters. All right, so, and again, the same thing for the prongs. Let's go ahead and get these merged down into the body as well. 
again, that's a visual thing. I, I don't know why it would disappear for a second there. Uh, but that's good enough right now. And uh, let's go ahead and do one extra step. I didn't do last time. John uh, was talking about taking this and moving it up and doing a little uh, a bezel underneath there. So that's what I'm going to do. And again, I put this on the datum. I uh, don't really have to go find that data. I'm just going to tell this thing to move. So I can just pick any particular item on here and move it in any direction I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, let's move this up. Let's give it a finite value of 0.75. That should be extended up enough and accept that. Ooh, looks like, did I create two? Or did I copy that? I don't know what I did. I might have done that by accident. Either I placed two or I copied that. So anyway, I moved that up. And uh, now let's go and place the uh, bezel around there. So I'm going to use bezel and stone. You know what? I don't want to scale it, but I do want to rotate 180 degrees from its current position. And there we have it. And once I select it, again, you'll notice that we get this little template file that pops up. And uh, let's bring this into the trillion. And I don't want that to extend so high up. That's the height above the Let's go down to maybe 0.25. And uh, I want to change the curvature on the outside a little bit. Let's go maybe 0.6. And that should bump it out a little bit. And drop that down. That is good. Now let's go ahead and accept that. And there we have it. And go ahead and make that one color as well. And there we have our finished uh, ring. All right, so that's the first portion. And uh, the second one is going to be using uh, most of these tools, uh, this CAD tool. So let's go ahead and uh, just save and close. So I'm not going to use a template. I'm just going to go ahead and use a blank template here, just a just part file. Notice we don't get any sketches or anything on the screen, so this is going to be up to me to create the size and shape. Uh, what I'm doing is a little uh, a barrel style bobble bracelet. Something, maybe something like this with some uh, stones on it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into creating something like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, insert some sketches. Again, I'm just going to use the datum planes that are provided by me. And I'm going to use a little polygon tool. And let's go ahead and give it a 8 millimeter diameter across those flats there. It should work to start with. And maybe make it 2, or excuse me, not 2, uh, 10 millimeters wide on each side, so 20 overall. And there we have it first profile. Uh, I want to put some little end caps on here. Um, so again, I'm going to insert a sketch. As I mentioned, you can insert sketches on any faces, along edges, and uh, I can insert datums anywhere I want. I just want to go ahead and insert it on that face, and it will go ahead and center that for me. So um, I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the uh, geometry provided previously. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these faces. That way I can just go ahead and just do an offset on those, and if I change the size of it, it automatically resize it for me. So let's go with a one millimeter. And we want to extrude that shape. I uh, don't want to go both directions like I did. I just want to go one direction into the part. And there we have it. So let's take that feature right there and let's go ahead and just mirror it about that plane. Looks good. All right, so now we have some places to put the gems. Let's do a couple other CAD style features. I'm going to put a, uh, I want to put a chamfer along this edge. Uh, what I want to do is just go ahead along this entire edge chain, and uh, we have we can either type in the dimension we want, or again these dimensions have these little drag tools, so you can kind of drag it to kind of close where you want and say, you know what, let's make that 0.5 on the dot, and that looks good right there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is place the stones. All right, uh, I can do the exact same thing I did while ago with the uh, the wireframe curve and place that on there. But I'm just, this time I'm just going to uh, um, 
just use the uh, edges because they may hit there, no problem with that. Uh, so we'll press, oops, sorry, Pave, not Craving Stone. So we'll use that edge and we'll take just my second edge. Of course, here's the surface. Uh, what I want to do is I'll change the size of, or shape of these. I don't necessarily want to go with a uh, round. So I can pick that. I can go into any shape I want. Uh, I want to use a, I think it's called a square cushion. And uh, I know there's a little, a little glitch for some reason. I, I pick it again here and it'll pop in there. There we go. So let's go ahead and spread the distance and you'll see those change on the fly. Again, maybe I want to elevate those just a hair off the surface. And uh, maybe adjust the uh, size of these just a bit. Let's go maybe 3.7. That looks good enough. And accept. All right, so those are in there. Let's go ahead and uh, attach, uh, excuse me, uh, some prongs. So again, kind of the exact same process we did before. Uh, we'll just leave the defaults there. That looks good. And again, cutter. Again, it matches the size. Uh, all right. So again, just right back into the same steps again of merging my cutters together. So merge my prongs. Actually, excuse me, shape pattern this. That's what I almost forgot. I want to do a circular pattern again and uh, again on these components. So I can window these all together around that axis. And we need to increase the number here. There's six sides on this one. So let's accept that. And now let's go do what I was going to do a second ago ahead of time. Let's merge my cutters and prongs. Merge the cutters. All right, there you have it. That looks good. Uh, one last thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of maybe round the uh, outside edge off. Uh, what we're going to do on this one is create, create a little shape on here. Under our freeform tab, we have this kind of neat little tool called Dome Tool. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use my edge right here, and let's go ahead and bump that out one millimeter. Which is good. And do the same thing on this side. All around there. And again, I can go ahead and merge those together. Uh, but what I, what I reason I was going to show this was again our history tree. Uh, if you notice, this one has a little uh, little twist to it. So I'm going to accommodate that. So if I didn't think about designing that design into it, then I can come back any given time. So I can roll my history tree back, uh, probably maybe to the chamfer step here, and do a uh, twist. I'm going to do a twist on the geometry using this space right here. Uh, let's take some of that twist out. There we go. And set that. All right, so simple process, hit and play. And you can watch all the processes replay themselves. Cutters, cutter, cutter, pattern. Merging that back through here. Let's go ahead and just drag that right back to the bottom, and uh, we can be done with it. So, uh, there we have it. Uh, you know, I could combine these uh, shapes. That guy, if I wanted, so they're both gold. And uh, if I wanted to make these even look a little better, I can pop under the visualize. Uh, you know, let's make this a a, a brushed, uh, maybe a brushed platinum look. So we go with higher shape here and once that's done let's go pop this over into our quick render so I can just do a quick live render on this uh, the longer I let it sit the uh, better it's gonna look and the gems will start uh, 
being uh, really flashy and good looking, and that'll stand out a little bit better, but uh, you know, we couldn't wait for that to happen. So uh, again, thanks for taking a look at Jewelry Cad Dream. Hopefully we showed you a few things today. And uh, there was a, a, a few questions and answers that people had asked. Uh, so uh, people asked about bringing in geometry from other outside of other softwares. So yes, we can. So let's do that. I'm going to open up a file. I'm going to open up a Parasolid file here. On the desktop. This was a ring I did in solid edge, and I purposely made it too big. So if I uh, if I just insert a sketch along here and uh, just do a include on geometry. So that's a that's a nine that's a twenty inch uh, about a forty inch radius. Let's say we want to basically uh, scale that. So let's go ahead and close that back out. And of course, you know, people were asking, can we do stuff with the geometry? Absolutely, we can scale our geometry. Uh, we want to do a uniform scale. And maybe bump that down to half scale. That looks good right there. So that looks good. We scaled it. Uh, maybe we want to place some gems on here. I can do some things with curves. I could actually uh, add some curve geometry to this using... Excuse me. There we go. I can do uh, points or, or, or curves on the face. I can come over here and uh, use uh, key points to apply locations. Uh, but let's just show. Let's just go ahead and show you. Throw a gem on here real quick. I'll just say, again, so I can go ahead and just place that on there really easily. Again, pattern that around. Add my prong cutters. So yes, utilizing geometry from other rings is quite capable. Uh, you know, even you need to add some uh, some fillets to the edges and stuff like that. That I have to make sure I get both edges here. So yes, using other to the software to bring in is very easy. To do. All right, so that about does it. Uh, again, thanks for taking a look at uh, Jewelry CAD Dream and. Uh, we are happy to answer any questions, so feel free to uh, call us. And here's our number again. Again, Diana Dietrich, uh, you can contact her or me, Dylan Mallet, the presenter. And uh, again, thank you.